Hi everyone, Tarek here at Interportal Studio, and today I'm going to be looking at the Native Instruments Machina Mark III. Uh, I know that Native Instruments calls this Machina. I tend to slip and call it Machine by mistake, so I hope you'll bear with me if I do that. Uh, I'm not going to go into the full functionality of machine software um, in this review. I think that's kind of beyond the scope of what I can cover in a fairly short review. Um, but I do want to focus on the new hardware, some of the changes to the software, um, as well as making some comparisons to the Ableton Push 2 and the previous version of machine that I owned, the Machina Studio. Uh, so let's take a closer look at this, uh, see what some of these uh, new functionality is, uh, and then we'll come back and I'll let you know my thoughts, what I liked, what I didn't like, can I recommend this, etc. Okay, so here we have a better view of the new hardware for the uh, Native Instruments Machina Mark III. Um, this is retailing for roughly $5.99 at most places. Um, you get the brand new controller, new displays, it's got a built-in audio interface now. Um, and for that price, it seems pretty amazing um, they could hit that price point for all the functionality that used to be on the studio that didn't even have uh, a sound card built in. Um, I will be honest though, when I first unboxed it and took it out, I did feel it kind of felt a little cheap. And, and let me clarify that because I've changed my views a little bit since then. But when I first took it out of the box, just this, uh, the case is plastic now. It's a smooth plastic. Um, it's definitely sturdy. I mean, it's well built. It's precise. It's it's a really nicely made case, but just the feel of it just kind of doesn't have like a luxury feel, like say the uh, Ableton Push 2, um, which has that nice aluminum top plate. Um, and it's kind of really surprising on this because the bottom of this has a nice anodized aluminum top bottom plate. Um, I don't know why they didn't use that for the top and use the plastic on the bottom, but uh, there it is. Uh, like I said, it is it is a nicely made case though, and over time I've actually come to appreciate it more. I mean, it's solid, it doesn't feel like it's flimsy or anything like that. It's just like the feel of it just kind of feels like, it just feels like a cheaper plastic to me. Um, and again, that could just be me. Um, but like I also mentioned, it is nicely made, it's precise. The edges are very sharp. I know uh, kind of Gaz Williams mentioned on the Sonic State Review these corners are really sharp. And I, I thought he was maybe over-exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, I mean, everything on this case is really like razor sharp. These edges are quite pointy, um, but that just goes to show that they have really tight uh, manufacturing tolerances too. Um, in addition to the case being like a smooth plastic, the knobs on the back for the audio card um, are also like a really smooth plastic um, for the headphone volume, microphone volume, things like that. Um, if you were in a club playing live, you needed to adjust these, and I don't know why you would, but if you need to, it could be kind of difficult. They're not rubberized at all. Um, the buttons are pretty much standard Native Instruments fare. If you've used any of their controllers recently, they feel uh, pretty much exactly the same. Um, the same with these knobs. Um, the knobs feel pretty much like standard um, Native Instruments knobs. They do uh, have touch sensitive knobs like the Machine Studio now, which is quite useful. Um, there's also this new encoder, this new, uh, you can, this new push encoder. This replaces uh, the previous jog wheel on the Machine Studio. Uh, I'll admit, I do feel this is another area that kind of feels a little cheap. I mean, it, it just feels like cheap plastic. Um, they've implemented it really well. It's easy to kind of navigate around with and things like that, but um, it just doesn't have that same kind of luxury feel that the Machine Studio jog wheel does. Um, and I also like the lower profile of the jog wheel, but um, I'm slowly getting used to it. And again, for the price, it's hard to complain. Uh, what most people will be interested in is the pads. The pads, again, are typical machine studio quality. Um, these are maybe slightly more sensitive than the previous versions. Um, they're also a little larger and easier to hit, which I find useful. Um, the one thing that is kind of weird for me with these pads is they have like a shiny, kind of really, really smooth finish on top. Um, and compared to the Ableton Push 2, um, which has more of a textured pad finish, I find the, the Push 2 is a little easier to play for me personally. Um, one nice thing about the uh, new Mark III hardware is you can actually change the, uh, the, uh, your settings for the hardware right from the hardware itself. Um, so you can change the pad sensitivity, the scaling for the pad sensitivity, um, how bright the LEDs are, how bright the displays are. Um, and another new useful feature is that uh, you can route the headphone output, or I'm sorry, the main output to the headphone output. So if you wanted to monitor on stage and you didn't have stage monitors, you could do that now, which is quite handy. Um, so overall, uh, you know, the new hardware is really, really nice. It's got these new displays, like I said. Actually, these are old displays. Um, when I first heard that Native Instruments was using reusing the displays from the Machina Studio, I was a little maybe disappointed at first. Um, the displays weren't bad by any means, but um, in this day and age when most people are used to retina quality displays, they do look a little lo-fi. Um, at least that's what I thought uh, when they first announced this. Uh, in use, the displays are actually much nicer than the studio. Um, they're a lot brighter. They look sharper just because of that. The colors are more saturated. Um, so I actually think these are fine. Um, another thing I like about the uh, the new hardware is just the colors. Uh, 
maybe not the best example here with some of the things I have queued up to for this demonstration, but um, the colors are really bright and vivid. They're deep colors. It looks really nice. The, 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 they're even colors on all the pads. You don't see any color disparities. Um, another really nice thing is while you can use a power supply with this, you don't have to. You can power it just with USB. And when you unplug the power supply and just power it via USB, um, the brightness doesn't really drop off that much. Um, this is vastly different than, say, the Ableton Push 2, which without the power supply, at least for me, it's almost unusable. Um, in a totally dark studio, it'd be fine, but um, for outdoor use or in minimal lighting, just without the power supply, it doesn't work. Um, so it's nice to see that um, the machine a Mark III um, can be just USB powered, um, which has actually been nice for me because I can take just my laptop with no power supply and just this with no power supply and go somewhere and work on music. Just plug your headphones in the back and you're good to go. Um, I'm still not sure it's totally portable. There's some weight to this unit. It's not super lightweight, but um, you have that option if you want. Um, so that's kind of the new hardware changes. Like I mentioned, there's an audio interface now, two in, two out, microphone input. Um, the sound quality is decent. It's on par with most native instrument sound cards. Uh, the Complete 6 or the Tractor Audio 6 kind of come to mind when I was listening to this. Um, good enough quality for most uses, not really a problem. It's not going to beat RME or Lynx for, uh, you know, pristine audio outputs, but probably don't need that in this instance. Um, one nice thing is the headphone output does seem to have plenty of power too, so you could probably use that in a live situation without having to use a separate headphone amplifier, uh, which is really, really convenient. Um, so let's look at some of the other new functionality here. Um, as you can see, some of the pad, the layout of the buttons has been changed. Um, the pad layout, especially for this um, keyboard, chords mode, step input mode for step recording. Um, it's just easier to find what you're looking for now. Um, we have fixed velocity for the, the pad. So if you want to use uh, fixed velocity when you're entering your drums, um, you also have 16 step velocity. Um, let's see louder and quieter hits as needed. Um, really, really convenient. Uh, we also have this nice touch strip here. Um, by default, let's see, um, you can set it up to be a pitch bend wheel, mod wheel. Um, they've added the performance effects from the Machine Jam series. Um, I should note that the performance effects can only be applied to your groups um, in, in Machine. So if we go to the effects select, uh, let's just play something here. You can change the uh, effects types here, the filter, flanger, burst echo, that's kind of subtle, rezo echo, ring modulator, obligatory stutter effect, uh, tremolo, So, oh, sorry about the long sample tail, sample tail there. Um, so that's really useful for performing live. Um, again, it can only be applied to your groups and there's kind of a limited selection there and I find that most of them are, are pretty basic. It's a shame that they didn't have something a little more complex from maybe some of the tractor effects, uh, wormhole and things like that. Um, maybe we'll see them add that later on though. Um, you can also lock the uh, effects uh, strip if you want to, uh, so you don't have to hold your finger down on it. Uh, one of the more interesting things for this touch strip though is this notes mode. Um, so, if you have a sound selected, you can basically strum across all the notes based on whatever uh, key you're set to. I'm just in a minor key here. Uh, but where I really like using this is if you when you combine the notes mode on the touch strip with um, the ARP, um, or which can use sequences as well as just standard ARP modes. It's a really interesting way of entering notes and recording notes, and I've come up with a ton of ideas I never would have earlier. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of the Korg EMX-1 touch strips, which you could kind of do the same thing on there. So if for some reason you're kind of sick of playing on the pads to play your notes, you can just do it from the touch strip now for kind of more interesting uh, effects you might not normally come up with. And there are eight built-in sequences for the ARP too, so you're not just limited to standard up, down, random, and things like that. Actually, the ARP and the machine doesn't have a random mode, unfortunately. Uh, so that's really nice. Uh, one of the other nice things that we have added now is this lock functionality from the Machine Jam. Um, so if we go ahead and lock, this is how everything sounds now. And now I can go in and change a bunch of settings. Let's see. So. And you can cancel all those with one button press with this lock functionality. 
really, really useful. That's probably one of my favorite new features of this. Um, that's a, such a handy thing to have live. It's one of the reasons I like like the uh, reload kit functionality in the electron boxes. You can just basically lock your the state of the machine down, go crazy, tweak whatever you want for like a build up, and then just drop right out of it um, with one button press. Um, and most usefully, that uh, something the, the electron boxes don't do, um, you can also lock the mute state. I don't know if you saw that I had the uh, kick drum muted, and when I unlocked it, um, the kick drum unmuted as well. So really, really handy for live functionality. Uh, we also can change the settings now, like I mentioned before. You can change your audio interface settings, the hardware settings, which is really handy. Um, we have touch sensitive knobs for recording automation, um, which is really again, super useful. Uh, and then the other new functionality is you can um, set macros. You can record macros, which, which macros you want to assign. Uh, let's see, just by touching them. This will add them to your macros for the sound, the group, or your master macros. Uh, I don't use that functionality too much myself. I'd rather do it on the, the software later on when I'm prepping my live sets, but it's there on the hardware now if you want it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the new hardware is great. I mean, there's, you really, you know, the fact you can just go in and edit your events if you want, you know, you can select which notes you want to edit and things all from the hardware itself. You can just get sucked into using just this box to make, you know, your grooves, your patterns, whatever you want to call them, your song ideas. And you never even have to look at the laptop. I mean, you can even save right from the hardware. Um, so if you're writing something, you like what you want, want to make sure you don't lose it. You don't have to go back to the laptop pretty much for anything. Um, I have to name things on the laptop, I have to change colors on the laptop, and if I'm using my own samples, I need to tag those on the laptop. But otherwise, I do everything just from the hardware and completely ignore the laptop, um, which is one of the reasons I think this is, you know, one of the best groove boxes ever made. Uh, so that's a quick overview of some of the new hardware features. Uh, Software-wise, I don't have something queued up to show you this right now, and I apologize for that, but they have added loop functionality um, to the... Uh, machine arranged now. Um, so if you have something sampled uh, in the sampler and you want to turn it into an audio loop, you can do that. You can convert it to an audio loop. Um, one thing I do want to point out about the audio loops though is that there's no way to trigger audio loops. You can't slice them up or whatever. You need to go back into the sampler mode for that. Um, anything as it, that is an audio loop um, is basically just stuck as an audio loop. It always repeats in the background. You can't change the timing, anything like that. You can change the pitch and some other slight, you know, small, you know, features, but um, it'll always just be playing looping in the background. You can mute, unmute it, and that's about it. So it's useful if you use a lot of loops. Um, personally, I still kind of tend to use the sampler and just re-trigger it um, in my songs. Uh, that just, for me, again, for live use, it's a little more practical. Uh, so that's it on the basic new functionality of the machine. Let's uh, kind of take a step back, and I'll let you know what I think about it overall. Thanks. So that was a closer overview of what Machina Mark III can do, uh, as well as some of the new changes to the hardware. Overall, I really, really enjoy using uh, the Machine Mark III. Um, while it's a smaller form factor than the Machine Studio and kind of has less of that console feel to it, um, I find I just get really sucked into using it and focus just on the hardware. Um, in fact, if I'll go on the record and say that if you can ignore the computer connected aspect of this, which is fairly easy to do, um, it's probably the most powerful groove box to date. Um, the fact that you're only limited by your CPU usage um, in terms of what effects you use, what instruments you use, um, what order they go in, um, that's really liberating when you're writing. Uh, if I want to put three EQs after a synthesizer to kind of really dial in exactly how it sounds, that's not a problem, provided my computer can handle it. Um, I also said that uh, one thing I like about the Machina series is just the, the quality of sounds you have. Obviously, Native Instruments has a ton of sounds. Um, the hardware itself comes with, I think, about eight gigabytes of sounds included. Um, they're all high quality sounds. The drum sounds are great. Um, you also get access to complete elements or maybe it's complete select. I forget what they call it, this, this version. Um, some of the a collection of instruments from the complete series. Um, you can add complete with full integration if you want to go with full, full integration of complete ultimate 12, things like that. Um, and plus you can use uh, your own VST plugins, uh, both synthesizers and effects if you want to. So, there's really kind of the sky the limit as far as what you can do with machine and hardware and software. Um, like I said, the only thing you're kind of limited by is your computer power. And uh, I think most people will be pleasantly surprised how much they can wring out of this. Uh, the new hardware itself is great. I love the new button layout. Um, the pads are pretty good. I'd, I'd say really good, actually. Um, I still prefer the Ableton pads, like I said earlier, but um, super expressive, easy to use. Um, it's easy to find your way around. Um, the encoder is the only thing I'm maybe kind of a little disappointed in. Um, I preferred the jog wheel on the Machina Studio. It just was lower profile. It felt better quality. Um, it works fine. I think they've Im implemented the functionality really well. It just kind of feels a little cheap compared to some of the other uh, controls on the unit. 
Um, the displays are great. I mean, that's a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Um, that was what made Machina Studio for me, like uh, the first machine I really, really enjoyed to use. Um, the fact you can do everything right from the hardware and not have to use the laptop or pretty much anything um, can't be overestimated. So it's really hard for me not to recommend the Machine Mark III. Uh, I think it's super powerful. It's fun to use. I've been using it for a few weeks now. I've got almost a full live set prepped and ready to record in the next week or two. Um, every time I sit down to do this review, actually prior to this, um, I've been kind of explaining some of the functionality and before I know it, I'm off totally on a tangent and I've forgotten about the review and within 15, 20 minutes, I've got a brand new groove I can expand on um, later on as a song. So I think that speaks highly of just how addictive this can be and how much fun it can be. Um, if you have one of the Machina Mark 1s or Mark 2s, is it worth upgrading? I think it's, again, a no-brainer, especially because of the displays. It completely changes how you'll interact with Machina. Uh, if you have the Studio, maybe it's a little less clear-cut. Um, I like the kind of smaller, more compact form factor. Um, it's still a fairly heavy unit, so it's not crazy portable, but compared to the Studio, it's much easier to lug around. You need a much smaller bag. Um, the studio obviously doesn't have the touch strip, um, which I think is pretty cool for some uses, but otherwise most everything else you can do on the studio harlot you can do with the Machine Mark III. Um, so if you're a studio user, user and uh, you're thinking about maybe gigging uh, in the future or you want to just make music out and about, which is totally doable now um, with the USB power, then I think it's definitely worth upgrading to the new unit. Um, if you're mostly using it in the studio and you're happy with how it works, it's probably not something you need to do right away. Um, you can kind of wait and see if Native Instruments adds more functionality just to the new hardware. So yeah, I like it a lot. It's definitely probably the most fun I've had in making music in the last year or so. Um, that's not a slight on any other gear, just for some reason this really connects with me. The fact that I can just, I'm free to use any effects I want, any instruments I want. Um, the browser is excellent. I love the Native Instruments browser, how everything is tagged. It's so easy to find samples and sounds you want. Um, especially when the samples and sounds they give you with the unit are so good, they're such high quality, um, and it's so easy to tweak them with just the macros they've already pre-assigned. So definitely something I can recommend. Uh, if you're a fan of groove boxes and you never use something like a computer controller, like the Push 2 or previous versions of Machine, highly recommend it. Um, it'll change what you think about groove boxes. Um, if you're a previous Machine user, you know what to expect already, and there's only more of the same. It's even better than it was before. Um, Yes, very much recommended and uh, something I could think everybody who writes electronic music would get some use out of. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, as usual, put them in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thanks, and I'll talk to you next time.